Hello guys, I'm delighted to say that the sponsor for this video is Manscaped. Now it's the summer months and you want to be looking as good as possible down there, but have you got the balls to do it? I know I do. Well, it's time to nut up or shut up. <laughs> Manscaped's ultra smooth package makes sure you've got the proper care down there. And their boxers 2.0, which are stupidly comfortable, by the way, give you the perfect platform to showcase your goods. So dive headfirst into summer and join the 5 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. So the ultra smooth package, it's a three step kit that allows you to buff, protect and smooth your most sensitive areas, which I know like when we've done it and we've done it with bad bits of product. It nicks, it hurts, it bleeds. You've got step one, crop exfoliator, yeah? Infused with ingredients that can soothe, clear, and keep that skin on and around your groin feeling fresh, the crop exfoliator can help reduce the risk of ingrowing hairs in your delicate places. Step two, crop gel. See, when you're shaving with our unique clear shaving gel just for the groin, it's called your delicate area for a reason. This is one place you don't want to go in blind. And then step three, it's time to shave. Yeah! The Crop Shaver was designed for shaving the groin area with confidence. This razor has three precision blades, including extra wide lubricating strips and a pivoting head for the ultimate groin grooming experience. So as I said, link is in the description, 20% off and free shipping when you head to manscaped.com using the code ALLCOT20. That's 20% off and free shipping. There's so few beautiful days of summer left and you don't want to spoil them with sweaty balls. To stay fresh, stay clean, stay smelling good with Manscaped. Hello friends, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. A new season is upon us in the championship and Michael Beale's beautiful Queen's Park Rangers side are about to do bits. But that's for another video. In this video, we're going to put forward one player from every single championship team that you need to keep an eye on this year. One to watch. Players that are maybe got something to prove or just someone that you're probably not keeping an eye out on, but you should do. Before we get into the video, if you are new to the channel and you enjoy the content, please do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and hit the like button as well. And of course, I uh, don't really need to invite you to do this, but if I've got it wrong and you think there's another player we need to keep an eye on, get involved in the chat. That is a forum for you guys to converse. So do so. Birmingham, Jordan James, he's about to establish himself as a first team player. 18 year old centre midfielder, featured 20 times last season for Birmingham in what was a really disappointing season for Birmingham City. Again, after we thought they might start to crawl their way up the league. 13 starts in that as well. He's been called up at youth level for England and Wales as well. And one of the positives of Birmingham City is the fact that they are able to bring through youth prospects and so you know you think of Jude Bellingham of course and actually keep an eye out for the 16 year old brother of Jude Job Bellingham who's also an incredible talent with a sort of natural physicality quite similar to his brother but back to Jordan James I think he will establish himself as a starter this year as a central midfielder incredibly raw but I think he's he's got something to offer in what could be a tough season for Birmingham. So remember, this isn't the best player for each team. This is one to watch, one to keep an eye out for all you championship fans out there or EFL fans. Blackburn, Dylan McCande. He could be in for a good season under a new progressive manager in John Dahl Thomason, the ex-Newcastle, yes, ex-Newcastle and AC Milan forward. John Dahl Thomason is taking over at Blackburn, taking over from, from Tony Mowbray. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. He is a very progressive manager and the 20-year-old Dylan McCande he can play as a right winger, left winger, number 10 as well. Was really good in Premier League 2 for Tottenham. So him now coming to Blackburn, he's not really pulled up any trees as of yet. So I think this could be the opportunity for him because John Tal Thomason likes to dominate matches and likes to press really, really high. So the energy that he can provide and the versatility, the dynamism of Makunde could be really, really impressive and helpful for him and more importantly, John Dahl Thomas. Yes, I'm wearing something different. Yeah, I might have forgotten Bristol City. Bristol City, Kane Wilson. Uh, one of many at Bristol City. Uh, I want to talk about two players in particular. So first of all, Kane Wilson, who is my pick. Um, 13 assists and 2.1 key passes per 90 as the wing back of Forest Green in League Two. The double jump is always a little bit scary, but I feel like he is one to watch just because of how brilliant he was last year for Forest Green. Played in a team that was in a back three, moving to a team that plays in a back three. I think that's really useful for him. And him stepping into the championship, I think he'll do fine. I think he'll do well because it was just so easy for him. Forest Green fell away in the second half of the season. 
but it was kind of because it was that little bit too easy. But Kane Wilson throughout was really, really impressive. And I'm excited to see how he gets on. Also wanted to talk about Alex Scott as well. Not that one. The other one, 18-year-old from Guernsey, played right wing back quite often. I was looking at it six times as a defensive midfielder right back, eight times as a midfield right. So essentially wing back, um, how many times is that? 14 times. In terms of centre midfield, played centre midfield 13 times. So I guess you've got a backup now in terms of Kane Wilson, then Alex Scott, but as two right-sided players, even in central midfield, I think Alex Scott will link up with Kane Wilson and both of them are really exciting players going into this new season. Burnley, Scott Twine, potential player of the year for the championship, full stop. I think he's such a specials player was just too good for League One. And one of those actually could have made the double jump. Um, if you think of Brennan Johnson, a lot of talk about him last year, not just coming from Lincoln and going into the Championship, but going into the Premier League. Scott Twine, it's a similar thing. What a signing for Vincent Company, And it's going to be really, really interesting to see how Burnley play this year. It's going to be so, so different. You've also got Callum O'Hare getting involved as well at Burnley. However, it had to be Scott Twine. 20 goals, 13 assists last season, deadly free kicks, which... It really doesn't matter what level you're playing at. If you're striking the ball the way he strikes it, you're going to have impact in games. And I think he will be the main man in a club and team that, in terms of style of play, is going to be revolutionised. Cardiff, Ruben Colwell, bags and bags of technical ability. It was a very difficult season for Cardiff last year. And so for someone like him, you know, youngster trying to make your way, an attacking midfielder as well. It was obviously very, very difficult for him. There's been a lot of changes over the summer, but one thing that needs to happen is that you need to unlock Ruben Colwell because the quality is there. It's very hard for a youth team player to sort of make that jump from youth team player to a regular first team starter. And that's what needs to happen with Ruben Colwell now, 20 years old. I think now is the time for him to kick on. And Cardiff have made a few signings. It's up for grabs in terms of if they're going to be much better this year or continue to stagnate but I think Ruben Colwell you've got a really exciting player there that as I said you need to unlock commentary I'm going to go with Victor Gioqueras he's about to enter his prime 24 years old now and last year we saw that he is a really really impressive striker and I think that's only going to continue this year last year 17 goals and five assists it was a great haul for the Swedish bagsman and going into this year, I think Coventry's ambitions will kind of go up a, a little bit. I think Mark Rommers has always improved that team year on year. And with some of the signings, I'm I'm intrigued to see where they can go. But as he develops and progresses, I've just been super impressed with him. And I think it's one where actually when we get to January, there's going to be a lot of Premier League teams eyeing up Victor Gioqueras. Blackpool, Lewis Fiorini was at Lincoln City last year. Great move for him. You can see the progression with him from Man City, that loan move to Lincoln City. League One comes back, Championship comes back, we can see where it's heading. I think having that tutelage at Man City is really helpful for him. He was also in the uh, Erste division, uh, so he's been abroad as well. He's had a lot of games, so I think that's always really important with players making their way through the EFL. When you're getting to sort of 100 games, you're starting to know what you're about and you're feeling a lot better about yourself. Central midfielder goes in at Blackpool on loan. And as a 20-year-old now, I think he feels like he's a man and he's going to be really important in terms of creating chances and possibly scoring a few as well. Six goals and four assists last season for Lincoln isn't that impressive, but it was a mid-table side last year. They had a few problems along the way, but his passing's really, really impressive. And I think he's going to be a great signing for Blackpool. Huddersfield Town, John Russell. This is his season. Six foot four, 21-year-old from that Chelsea Academy. You know he's going to have a bit of quality, but I think he's been quite conservative during his time at Huddersfield so far because you've got someone like Lewis O'Brien who's been that aggressor. If Lewis O'Brien leaves, then I just think it's going to be super, super important for someone who can play in the 10 role and has done for Chelsea's academy to to become the aggressor himself be that box-to-box -box midfielder be interesting to see what kind of role he undertakes at Huddersfield but I don't think it will be the same one and I think there'll be some impressive numbers from him this season because he's got absolutely everything to be a bit of a blockbuster midfield of Huddersfield this year what on earth is going on at Hull City right now I need to dive a little bit deeper in it before I do my season predictions but Jean-Michel Serri OK, like, how have you got this one done? I don't really understand it, but I think if you're a whole City fan, I think you could be really, really excited because the guy is silk at times. He's going to be a part of a, a new look midfield for Hull City. Uh, Honeyman left, which I thought I was like, what? How are you letting this guy leave? And I would still kind of think that, but Ozan, two fan who Watford fans aren't really fans of, but I think he comes in there and he will be part of a double pivot with Jean-Michel Serri. 
and he's just going to control and dictate, which I think it's got to be something you've got to be really excited about. He's a really, really quality player for Hull City to get and could transform them. He's going to be someone that will be targeted by the opposition in terms of someone to stop. But an amazing signing for Hull City and one to watch for sure. Luton Town, Corley Woodrow, it, he could explode the season. Not literally, that would be a real waste of a new signing. But he's going to come in and I like the style of play when it comes to Corley Woodrow. You know you're going to get that work rate from him and with Luton Town sides... They are going to work really, really hard as well under Nathan Jones. And I think although last season was a terrible one for him with just four goals, I just think he could be a good fit for them. It's another one where, you know, maybe a little bit lost elsewhere, needs that new challenge, but the quality is there. The drive is there as well. And his mate from Barnsley, Colton Morris, is going to be there as well, which is another one to watch for them. I think going into a, a Luton side that is you know, in a much better place than Barnsley in terms of quality, but also has that underdog feel, could really help with their partnership. And as I say, Corley Woodrow could be a very, very important number 10 or classic number nine for Luton this year. Middlesbrough are going to go for Ryan Giles. He could be a devastating wing-back under Chris Wilder. A couple of things that we know is, one, Chris Wilder's a great manager and the wing-backs thrive under his teams. And secondly, that Ryan Giles has incredible delivery into the box. And I think... You think of the 10 assists from 32 games last year. I think it, it's a given for me that he will get over 10 assists this season in the way that they will play. And it could be well, well more than that if Middlesbrough can get themselves sorted out when it comes to the forward positions. In terms of central strikers, not totally where they want to be as of yet, but I would expect them to make the moves pretty quickly. And I think Ryan Giles, you will see with the assist total from him this year, I think it'll be very, very high. And with Ryan Giles and Isaiah Jones on the other side, the wing backs are going to be deadly for Middlesbrough this year. Millwall, Zion Fleming, of course, Jed Wallace has gone. George Honeyman, who I spoke about earlier, has come into this Millwall squad. So I think that's a great signing for them as well. But I think Zion Fleming will be the guy who takes over from Jed Wallace, takes over that mantle. The reason being, for Fortuna Sittard last season, he scored 12 goals and assisted four in a side that finished one point off the relegation zone at the end of it. A relegation playoff spot, sorry. He was directly involved in 44% of their goals last year. So he's a player that can play as a sort of second striker slash attacking midfielder, a bit hybrid, a little bit like Jed Wallace as well. And so he's someone who I think the creative input will need to come from him. George Honeyman can get involved and score those goals as well. But I think he's going to be the main man that they play through next year. So definitely one to watch. Norwich City, Christos Zolis. Uh, he's never going to be a Premier League player or wasn't when they bought him but he does have the talent to destroy the championship to be honest this year he only started three games last season in the Premier League despite that I think you could see what he's about direct running and direct running with the ball as well two valuable assets in the championship which could really really hurt the opposition I think the Greek international is set up for a big year this year Preston North End I'm going to go for Emil Reese. Jacobson slept on as a goal scorer and I think it's one where Preston North End didn't really get much hype last year and I think this could be a year where you'll be hearing a lot more about Preston North End and Ryan Lowe but as someone who is six foot three and last year scored 16 goals and provided five assists I think he went massively under the radar and didn't get the credit that he deserves this year after last year which was a transitional season for Preston North End at Deepdale I think that he will continue with these great numbers and I think he'll start to get the column inches as well. And with that, again, I think it will be someone who now has that kind of star power up front and someone that teams will be taking notice of alongside someone like Ben Woodburn, who could be a great creator for him this season. QPR, my team. I'm going to go for someone quite random here, someone that you won't know, and so therefore is someone to watch. You've obviously, you've got Michael Bill coming through the door and he's going to have his own ideas, but also his contacts and players that you might not know about, but we can get at a cut price who could be pretty exciting. And Kenneth Pal is hopefully one of those players. He's going to be key for width and creativity. He's someone who came through the academy at PSV, who Michael Beale has seen since he was about 13, 14, when, not Michael Beale, Kenneth Powell, when he was a coach at Chelsea and always kept an eye on him. And so I like that first and foremost because it's someone who he's seen with his own two eyes, which I think is important. In terms of uh, him last season, he was at Zvol and they didn't have the best of seasons. He only had one assist, but he was a bit hard done by there. He created six big chances last year, so he was robbed of a, an assist or two. He also averaged 1.4 key passes per game, which is... Not that common to get those kind of numbers for a wing back. Uh, I think he offers up real pace, 
uh, a bit of an attacking verve as well, something that we don't have. And actually, we don't have many fullbacks full stop at the time of recording. So he will be important on that left-hand side. And um, hopefully, Bill knows what he's doing here and he's got a gem that he can develop. And, and it's going to be an exciting one for Kenneth Powell, who we don't know, but hopefully soon we will. Reading, I'm not going to go with that exciting of a name because to be honest with the players that have come in so far, I'm slightly concerned about Reading. It feels incredibly experienced, for want of a better word. Um, I'm going to go for Ovi Ajaria. He's going to be one of the crucial players in terms of their survival attempt. For me, I love watching him play. I think he's so, so talented, but that's kind of true dominance from him. Never seems to materialise in terms of actual numbers. Only scored four goals only sorry had four goal contributions actually last season and I think in one of those games he scored two goals so really left wanting last season but the player is there he is quality and if Reading are going to survive this year I think he's going to be so important in terms of unlocking the opposition and controlling games for them. Rotherham, Dan Barlasa, but it doesn't really get talked about how good he is. And with a couple of big, big players for Rotherham leaving, he's going to be important in terms of that stability of the team, but also someone who can step back into the championship and hit the ground running. Created 10 big chances last year. And I think when he played well, they played well for large portions of the season last year. He's a bit of a regista type footballer, despite it being Rotherham, who can be quite direct at times quality player who people don't is in an unfashionable team so doesn't really get the plaudits that he deserves maybe this year will be the year that Rotherham stay up and that he gets that credit Sheffield United I'm excited to watch this guy I'm also excited to see how many games he plays and if he starts I think he's certainly good enough Cardiff last season uh, he did really really well for them Tommy Doyle the thing with Sheffield United that intrigues me though is you got Ollie Norwood you got John Fleck as well Tommy Doyle coming in and the passing ability that he's got, how do you sort of fit him into this team? The important thing is that he needs to be in there because at Cardiff last year, there were moments where he was playing passes that I don't think a lot of people at championship level can see those passes. He's got a lovely vision about him. I think he's Premier League quality already, so I expect him to start, but that could ruffle a few feathers and actually see the sort of next stage of Sheffield United in terms of their squad that's been so dependable in terms of those names for so so long he comes from man city of course he's had that footballing education of getting the ball and keeping it on the ground and i think Sheffield united are going to be a very exciting team to watch this year stoke city jacob brown he's someone who's very underappreciated i think possibly at stoke but also outside of stoke most importantly stoke city fans let me know how you feel about jacob brown is he someone who can get 20 goals in a season for you because he's someone who initially was a right winger the output wasn't really there, but as the years progress, I think you can see he's a good pro. Has he got the quality to be a Premier League player? Not totally sure, but I think through force of will, I think he's going to get himself to a couple of Premier League games at some point. So at some point that season needs to click where he really starts to get all those goals. And this could be the year for, for him. I'm sure Stoke City fans will be hoping that that is the case. Having him provide... 18, 19, 20 goals this season would surely be his expectation for himself, but also one where we now, as someone who's a, I guess, a, a right forward hybrid striker, those are the kind of numbers that we're looking for if he's going to really kick on. Work hard, play hard, Ballard. Dan Ballard for Sunderland has to be my choice. Really intrigued to see how he gets on and how Sunderland get on this year. They're having a really interesting window. And I think Ballard, who cost a pretty penny, apparently, according to Transfer Market, £2.07 million pounds and was wanted by Burnley and Vincent Company means that in terms of what Vincent Company is trying to put together, he wants ball playing centre backs and Dan Ballard can provide that. Coming from Arsenal, of course, last year on loan at Millwall, very, very consistent there. And I'm surprised. I'm surprised he's at Sunderland because I think it's I expect him to go for a team that was pushing for the playoffs. And maybe that's where I'm I'm not looking at Sunderland correctly this year. Are they going to go up and be absolutely fine and make that push themselves? Quite possibly, because the business that they're doing so far is pretty tidy. Swansea, Harry Darling, really. I mean, what a perfect signing for Swansea City. Absolutely perfect for the system that Russ Martin wants to or does employ there, where they, they concentrate on holding the ball for long periods of time and having a lot of possession, being very, very patient. And Harry Darling, coming from MK Dons, which obviously Russ Martin was at previously, he knows the player. And and the centre-half's ability on the ball was the best in League One. And so coming into the Championship, he will be absolutely fine. He's tough as well, but the passing range is so impressive, so confident. Just comes out so elegantly like a, like a gorgeous gazelle. 
Um, he's just going to do brilliantly there. At times, he was playing as a libero in a back three for MK Dons last year. It was so key for them. I think he's going to be crucial for Swansea. Watford, João Pedro, he's just too good for the championship, really. And I think in Rob Edwards, you've got someone who is inexperienced and the second half of the season with Forest Green Rovers was a little bit odd, but it was kind of because it was almost too easy for them in the first half. They still won the league, but only just. But the amount of goals that they scored, the, the pattern of play was really, really strong. And in particular, the front two did brilliantly. Jamil Matt, Matt Stevens scoring so many goals, 23 and, and 19, respectively. And so with João Pedro, I expect the strikers to get service with the quality that Watford have. And I expect him to score 15 plus goals this season, because really with that dynamic style of football that Rob Edwards will try and employ here at Watford, I expect them to do well. And I expect João Pedro, who, as I say, is kind of in that gap between too good for the championship and not really hitting the heights in, at Premier League level just yet. I think he's going to be way too good as that second striker. West Brom, Jed Wallace. He carried Millwall for years. I think that is such a big hole left at Millwall. But he needed to move on for his own career and it's the right move for him. And it'd be interesting to see how he gets on at West Brom. I think they've made some... Um What's the word? Experienced signings, but I don't mean that in a negative way. I think it's sort of safe signings, let's say. Players that have dominated in the championship for a while, the likes of Swift and importantly, Jed Wallace. I could have put forward Swift uh, in this, but I think we know what you're going to get from him. But I think what's so great with Jed Wallace is could his numbers explode? Last season, six goals, 12 assists. Prior to that, constantly getting loads of si uh, assists and goals. I think at West Brom, with the players that will be around him, it's a great chance for him to get himself into the Premier League, which I would love to see because you can see he's a bloody good bloke. But also for him to just be an incredible weapon for West Brom this season. Maybe a bit like, say, a, a Snodgrass has done over the years, um, but someone who can get in the box and get himself some goals as well. And Wigan, Callum Lang. Um, first of all, because I just loved him when I was a uh, Wigan manager in Football Manager 2021, I think it was. But last year, he actually had some blinding performances. And so it just proves that Football Manager is a great game, doesn't it? 15 goals and seven assists. That's miles better than his best previously, which was nine goals and two assists. So... On that right-hand flank, he obliterated a lot of League One defences last season. A huge reason why Wigan got themselves into the Championship this year. Is he ready for that step up? Time will tell, but I think that's the question that you can put out a lot of these Wigan players who've come up from League One. And I, I think when it comes down to talent, there's no doubt he's got it in his locker to, to step up. It might take him a little while, but I wonder if in the second half of the season, he really does start to, to get running. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing my season predictions very, very soon. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. If you don't want to miss that, hit the notification bell as well. And if you enjoyed the championship and want to see more of me on the championship, there's the League of 72 channel which i will be dedicating all my efl content to this season so make sure you head over there and subscribe to them thanks for watching see you next time